So you want to add carbon dioxide to your grow space. Well, there's a variety of sources of that carbon dioxide that you can add. And here on Tobacco University, I'll provide you with some quick advantages and disadvantages of each, and then go into more detail on each of the sources described here in other videos that can be found on this channel. All right, let's get into sources of carbon dioxide for cannabis plant production. Now just keep in mind that carbon dioxide is a non-flammable, colorless, odorless gas. It can be in a solid or liquid state or gaseous state used across various industries, including welding, food, beverages, manufacturing, as well as water treatment. So it's very commonly found. Now, so one of the options when we're looking at enrichment, we have compressed bottles. The advantage of utilizing compressed bottles is they're typically easy to get, they're easy to find at most uh, grow shops, as well as many air suppliers. And they're also a pure form of carbon dioxide, meaning just carbon dioxide is purified and then compressed in the bottle, you're not getting any sort of byproducts. The disadvantage of using a compressed bottle, though, is the transport and or refilling of the bottles can be a hassle, especially as you get to the larger sizes. So compressed bottles aren't uh, looking like something you want to implement. There is also a liquid carbon dioxide to consider. Now liquid carbon dioxide is a very dense and pure form of carbon dioxide. It's one of the densest, purest forms. It's a great, great source in that regard. However, the disadvantage is, is it's difficult to get and can require special holding equipment and refrigeration on site. So typically liquid carbon dioxide is uh, reserved for larger operations where they need the density of carbon dioxide. They don't want to store, um, they want to have limited storage areas, but there are additional equipments that, uh, that is required. Now there's propane as a carbon dioxide source. Now utilizing propane, this can also provide heat as a source when it's burned. It's going to give you some heat and uh, additionally enrich your area with carbon dioxide. However, the disadvantages is that this will also increase humidity and also potential byproducts of other gases. Also consider the questions, what if heat is not needed in your grow space, particularly in the summer? And what if the heat is only needed at night or the lights off period? Carbon dioxide can only efficiently be utilized by plants during the lights on uh, period or during the, when sunlight exposure occurs. So if you're adding carbon dioxide or burning propane as heat, thinking you're adding carbon dioxide, you are but the plants really are not able to take advantage of it, which can also cause considerations if you're needing uh, to supplement carbon dioxide in the summer months where heat is not needed. And lastly, there are biological carbon dioxide generation sources as well. The advantage is it's a passive form of car carbon dioxide uh, generation. It tends to be pretty um, easy. Uh, the disadvantages, though, is it's an inconsistent, inconsistent production, meaning these are biologically generated, so they're biological systems that need to be uh, fed, and they might produce more one day and less another day, and also temperature dependent. It's also a not regulated form of carbon dioxide, meaning you could get a lot in one area uh, and not a lot the next day. So keep these in mind. If you want to learn more about any of them, check out other videos on this channel where you can learn more about the details to determine the best source of carbon dioxide for your growing operation.